Hi, this is Chuck Martin. We're at the AI Summit in New York. I'm happy to say I have with me here Sridhar Kandala, CEO of Sears Kairos. Welcome. Thank you, Chuck. So last time we talked, about a year ago, we talked about you were at a different part of Sears. What is this new part of Sears? So we are heavily into building organizations that are running 100% on AI employees, so to speak. And then what we are doing is since we are really ahead of most of the industry and we have real world use cases, we said let's form a separate division where we are going to implement AI employee organizations within Sears for our use cases. And then we are going to go ahead and take those examples for other companies in the similar spaces for the services industry, the IoT industry, and then appliances and AI industry. So we formed this division to focus on that. So are you creating essentially digital employees? Yes, 100% AI employees. They will have names like Srini and Chuck, and they talk and they manage real employees, they manage talk to customers, so we have amazing, I'm really excited about that. Do you have to pay them? We have to pay <laughs> somebody, <laughs> yes. So what, what does this look like in an organization? So uh, the simplistic form is basically, um, you know, like customers calling us and then saying, hey, I'm interested in a Sears Protect Home Warranty. Or we calling them and say, oh, you're interested in a Protect Home Warranty? They're like, okay, this is what we offer. They're like, what does it mean? Does it mean that I have to pay a deductible? They'll ask all these questions. And then the AI is trained to be a really uh, you know, bond with the customer, understand their needs, offer them discounts. It has access to, you know, you can take this, but if you buy our credit card, it is more beneficial for you. You know, we don't ask you for the age of the appliance. So that's one example where instead of having, um, you know, these are all 100% AI employees. And then if Chuck speaks, let's say to an AI employee by the name Richard, and they gel well, then Richard becomes the home manager. So anytime Chuck calls, it will always be Richard, always be the personality. So, but does Chuck know it's a computer? Yes, we have to declare that. So we start by saying that, hi, I am Richard, a virtual uh, you know, AI employee. But beyond that, you know, I was demonstrating it to a uh, Uber driver who speaks Tagalog. Uh, it, these are multilingual, so they will switch their language based on what they hear. And he couldn't tell for the longest time in the Uber ride that this is an AI till I had to tell him that this is not a real person. So is it is it beyond beyond it's going way beyond chatbots? Yes, it's voice. So there are two aspects to it: voice and video. So one of the AI bots is, if you're on a phone, then it's voice. But if you are on a desktop, then the way it looks is, you have on the real estate on the right side where the AI says, take a look at this video. Let me show you. So there are AIs which will help you diagnose your problem. Take a look at a picture of the refrigerator. You see this. This is where does you need to replace the part. Or in a sales cycle, here is a credit card. So video, we have audio, and multimodal, and uh, of course we have text, right? And text is a fallback currently because some of the times when somebody says something and there's a lot of background noise, the AI doesn't always pick up. So as a fallback, we say, can you type that in? But you know, in telephony, we don't do that, so we have telephony too. So if these are AI employees, are there real people behind it? No, the real people, no, this is a new new initiative, no real people. We are not doing, we are not doing software to help uh, humans be more productive. These are like 100% standalone AI employees, right? And so for example, we are doing a call center software where we are saying, you don't just get the software, you get the employees too along with the software because the software comes, not just the call center software, but it comes with 3,000 AI employees along with it and they can speak any language and they can sell, so uh, yeah. So if Richard, the AI agent employee, gets really, really good, he becomes the star, can someone hire him away? Yes, yeah, so that's the plan, is we're saying that hey, when you take out software, you will come with star employees, and then you are right, the employees get better, they get better because we initially train them on what is good, but after that we have a feedback loop right now, they constantly listen to what is going good and bad based on a reward function, and they optimize themselves in terms of like, I didn't do this right when the rebuttal, when the customer said the price is so high, my conversion went down, I should have done something else. So we give them the ability to do that with a lot of A-B testing. So is this beyond a pilot? Is this actually running? 
Yes, so the one one place that we launched is if you go to cshomeservices.com or cs.com, there is a schedule a repair. That is the pure um, web version and then you'll see like, um, you can go and schedule a repair, talk to an agent and there you can speak, you can try speaking Italian, French, uh, many languages and it speaks and it's on cs.com. But the remaining things we are launching, uh, that sales one should be launching in about a couple of weeks from now. So you'll be able to sell and you know see the demo. So do you have any research that a caller, a, cl a customer calls and they're so frustrated with the computer, they say, talk to an agent, let me talk to a person, since this is no person behind it. Yeah, so we actually monitor that human escalations and the AI, uh, it, it deals with it very, very, very well. First of all, it sounds not like uh, AI, it sounds like human. Second, I've seen a call, I was looking at the calls, and like, you know, he starts off by saying, the moment he hears AI, he says, you know, I, I want to talk to a real person, then he says, Absolutely, but let me tell you something. I have access to more dates, and I will be available to you right now and 24-7. I can text you back, and guess what? If I don't find, he was calling for a repair order. So if I don't find a technician for you in your area right now, I'll call you back because I have access to, you know, so, so the AI is kind of saying this stuff, and then it offers, so, and people are liking it. I've seen people start with that, and I've seen frustrated customers. For some other reason, they start calling, and he was upset using the F word. And um, you know, three, four times, and you see, calms down, and the AI kind of, uh, you know, and the AI changes its tone. So it changes its tone, changes how it speaks, changes its speed. So it's not like it's not like your standard, you know, call center software at all. So could you have a bad AI employee? We can have a bad AI employee. Yes, um, it will be um, depending on the what the customer is asking. For example, we have seen customers who will try to say, I don't need to pay for this repair because I have a warranty and they will try to make the AI kind of say, yes, it's a free repair. So there are guardrails uh, against those, but yeah, you can have a bad AI employee. We have, one thing very important is having uh, weak real time metrics at this stage. So we have to see if it, something's going bad. So those are a separate sort of AI employees who are scoring and analyzing the performance of these AI employees and their alerting. So there are a whole bunch of these. The common term they use is agents for it, but I like to use AI employees because I really feel they're above and beyond and agents. For example, I was speaking recently to the students of Ross School of Business, and what I was saying is, when I hire somebody, I look for problem solvers, owners, you know, people who don't just say it's not my job, but people who go above and beyond. All those principles, which are kind of not different from my early Amazon days, we are taking those principles and having the AI employees imbibe the same thing. So instead of saying, I'm sorry, Chuck, on Friday we don't have anybody in your area, it will say, I know you said Friday, I have absolutely nobody, let me try, can I call you back tomorrow? By the way, the late Friday work or early Friday work for you, so it tries to go and solve, right? So. The qualities I would look or we would look for in a good employee, human employee, are the same things we're training AI employees. So when it, call, when it calls a customer back, says, hello, this is your AI employee? Yeah, it'll say Richard. And it'll always be Richard if you latch on and you did well with Richard. It'll always be Richard, whether, whichever department you're calling. Say, hey, Chuck, how's it going? I know last time we spoke and you know uh, I have this new person. Is that okay with you? And it'll speak like an employee. And then how does Chuck always get back to Richard? So anytime we know who's Chuck, it will be Richard. Even if Richard's busy? Uh, yeah, yeah. So Richard, yeah. So And then they are kind of polymorphic, right? So meaning that the back-end employee, the voice for Chuck would be Chuck and a certain English accent. If somebody from, you know, with a British accent is calling, then it will say, I am Adam, and it will speak British accent. It can speak French, right? So it will speak almost any language. Why does Sears come up with this idea? So I think we have, part of it is necessity. Right? I think that we really need to innovate and we have some businesses, they, are, they require a lot of uh, human employee management and we are not um, you know, as big as, uh, you know, from an employee standpoint as before. So now we want a lot more AI employees to do that, but more importantly, we are seeing these uh, certain functions, they are performing way better. They are performing way, way, way better, multilingual talking, right? And then, Call center is not our biggest example, but compared to a call center agent in India or Philippines, this can speak in any accent, any language, and do 
thousand functions and it will do as though it, you're its only customer and it knows everything about you during the conversation. So is this going to transform contact centers? Absolutely. That I would say before you uh, know, absolutely like contact centers would be all AI employees. Do they know this? I think I'm seeing a lot of them, they're getting, but they're not picking up to the pace. Uh, I'm not, I see that, I was at the Amazon Connect in Vegas last week, and uh, I saw a lot of vendors, but honestly, it's going to change so quickly, and people are innovating, but it's going to move very quickly once people are seeing. And right now, some of the underlying models are buggy, like if you give an email address, the background noise like here, you may not get it right, but that's getting fixed so quickly. So a year from now, we're sitting here talking about this. Oh yeah. What will we be talking yeah. about? Yeah, we would be talking about like, you know, how can we get the AI employees uh, better and you know, how is their performance better and uh, can they connect to uh, actual human things. Right now, most of our business, the actions are changing software bits. Router technician here, router technician there do this, right? But these employees, can connect to a robot or a refrigerator or an employee, then they can manipulate actual real world things, not just software uh, that they're manipulating. So that will be a big one coming up. Well, I look forward to that conversation. Thank you. This is Thanks, Chuck sir. Martin, the AI Summit in New York.